So the so-called crazy Russian hacker has come up with this pretty much suicidal idea for an air conditioner using dry ice and a fan. After this, now I need to make three holes on the side of it. After five minutes of duct taping, here's another piece. I would break it in a big pieces and then throw it up and up. Check this out, how cool is that? The cold smoke comes out. Dry ice is basically solid carbon dioxide at about minus 80 degrees Celsius. Carbon dioxide is basically what you breathe out and shouldn't be confused with carbon monoxide, which is by comparison insanely poisonous. Carbon monoxide binds very strongly to your hemoglobin and stops your blood from carrying oxygen. And when it does that, that's basically curtains for you. Carbon dioxide is by comparison nowhere near as toxic. However, that's as long as you're not trying to evaporate kilograms of the stuff into a room to try to cool it down. As odd as it might sound, the breathing reflex isn't actually triggered by lack of oxygen, but the breathing is stimulated by the buildup of carbon dioxide in your blood. And therefore, an atmosphere with a lot of carbon dioxide is actually very bad for you. Maybe the most famous example of this was the Apollo 13 mission. The astronauts faced another problem, their own exhaled breath. The lithium hydroxide chemical to take carbon dioxide out of the air was not sufficient in the lunar module. Where the astronauts were basically being poisoned by the carbon dioxide they were breathing out into this oversized Coke can of theirs some 250,000 miles from the nearest breathable atmosphere. Strange the things you miss about Earth. Anyway, they managed to improvise a fix with some carbon dioxide filters and duct tape. Thankfully, we now actually have a very good idea of the hazards of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. So, for instance, about 2% is the point where long-term exposure is going to be harmful. And that's about the level that the Apollo astronauts were getting to when they improvised their solution. Once it gets up to about 10%, you're looking at pretty much instant unconsciousness and death shortly afterwards. And it's a pretty unpleasant way to die. The numbers break down roughly like this. A cubic meter of air weighs about one kilogram. So roughly to get a 10% atmosphere of carbon dioxide, you would need to evaporate 100 grams of carbon dioxide into that volume. That's only the mass of about two chocolate bars per cubic meter. Here's another piece. I would break it in a big pieces and then throw it up and up. Well, let's take a fairly small room, let's say five meters by five meters by two meters, a total of 50 cubic meters. If you were to evaporate about five kilograms of dry ice into a room like that, it would be very bad for your health. Now, it's true that carbon dioxide has a peculiar taste to it, and these very high concentrations are going to be fairly uncomfortable. So, it looked out like this. The largest danger is probably for people in relatively confined areas, say, for instance, like a, a camper wagon, especially if you're going to go to sleep with this stuff evaporating into the room, because there's a very real chance that you will never wake up. Bottom line is if you want to cool a place down, a place that probably doesn't have good airflow, using a gas that will rapidly induce unconsciousness and death once its concentration gets up to about 10% is just a really dumb way of doing it. Check this out, how cool is that? The cold smoke comes out. Alright guys, that's pretty much it. Let me know what you think in comments below. And as always, thank you for watching. Don't forget to thumbs up this video, share it everywhere.